my name is Deep Saikali. I am the Solutions Lead for Tanzu Application Platform and Azure Spring Apps. In today's session, we're going to cover Azure Spring Apps, the easy way to run your applications on Azure. I'm also at Microsoft. I'm on point for everything developers need to build, migrate, and scale Java applications on Azure. I'm also a Java developer. I started in 1995 with JK1, have been having plenty of, plenty of fun ever since. Today, let's dive on the easy way to run Spring apps on Azure. Azure and Spring work together brilliantly. Thanks to an ongoing collaboration between VMware and Microsoft that we had in 2016. The strategic partnership we had seven years ago, and it is, it is going strong. We worked extensively on integrations, making Spring easier to run on Azure, so you can focus on your apps and not the ministry app. Azure Spring Apps is a fully managed service for Spring Apps that lets you focus on building and running the apps that run your business without the hassle of managing underlying infrastructure. You can simply deploy your charts, our code, and Azure Spring Apps will automatically buy your apps with Spring Service Runtime. Once deployed, you can easily monitor application performance, fix errors, and rapidly improve applications. It is integrated into Azure ecosystem and is ready for the enterprises. The service is jointly developed and operated and supported by Microsoft and VMware. Azure Spring Apps is built on Kubernetes. The exciting part is you get the power of Kubernetes, but you don't have to really worry about learning or managing uh, Kubernetes. Little more details. The big rectangle that you see is Azure Spring Apps. It is built on Kubernetes. Each service instance has two dedicated Kubernetes clusters. They are managed by Azure Spring Apps and completely abstracted away from users. Service runtime. Service runtime with managed Spring App components, app lifecycle, log streaming, and many more service runtime components are managed in the right side Kubernetes cluster. Your apps are running in the left cluster in the time graph. Your apps can interact with any Azure service um, or external service or any of your on-premises systems. Your logs, your metrics, and others, they're all available through Azure Monitor. You can monitor end-to-end -end using any tools and platform of your choice. You can secure your apps using Azure Active Directory, machine identity, or end-user identity. You can automate end-to-end -end using your favorite uh, tools and platforms. Now, as developers, you can continue to use uh, development tools that you're familiar with, uh, whether it's VS Code, Maven, Gradle, IntelliJ, Eclipse, Spring Tool Suite. You can also deploy using tools like IntelliJ and Maven. NetNet, it is an easy way to get started. You can focus on your business objective and everything else is taken care of for you in the cloud. Now, do you have to manage anything here? Uh, no, you don't have to. Azure Spring Apps has absorbed all the complexities complexities of managing infrastructure, uh, hosting applications, application lifecycle, managing applications, blue-green deployments, publishing logs and metrics, and the list just goes on and on. And all of these are supported by Microsoft and VMware. There are three simple steps to get started, just three, right? Azure Spring Apps is as simple to spin up as it is powerful, and it follows three simple steps. The first one, you create a service instance, and next, create an app within the service. And finally, you can deploy the application binaries or source to Azure Spring Apps. Now, Azure does all the hard work for you. All you have to do is point it in the right direction. It is, it is really, really that, uh, that simple. Now, you can deploy and manage Spring applications and Polyglot applications built using Node, Python, Go, and .NET. With the fully managed Spring Cloud Gateway, you can route any requests to apps and address cross-cutting considerations for those apps placed behind the gateway. Cross-cutting considerations like configuring single sign-on for end users using your preferred identity provider, including Azure Active Directory, or considerations like request rate limiting and many more cross-cutting features like these. Once your apps are up and running, they can connect with Azure services. We have made it possible to leverage the full power of Azure from your Spring apps, and it's getting easier to do so every day. We have a team dedicated working on these integrations. 
we provide mechanisms to connect and interact with data, messaging, cache, storage, directories, and so much more, so much more. Creating an Azure Spring App instance starts on the Azure portal. We hit the Create button, then we enter the word Spring to search for the wizard that we're going to use to instantiate an instance of Azure Spring Apps. We're going to need to set the subscription and the resource group that we want to use. We'll then pick a unique name for the instance. We'll have to pick a tier. In this case, we are going to select the Enterprise tier. We'll then accept the terms and conditions and move on to um, the next stage where we can set the settings for the various kinds of components that are part of Azure Spring Apps. This is where we can decide to activate or deactivate certain components along with how much resources each of those components is going to be assigned and consume. On the diagnostics page, we can turn on log aggregation so that all the logs from all the deployed app instances get sent to Azure Log Analytics, where we can analyze it or we can send it to other logging solutions. On the application insights page, we can configure uh, distributed tracing and metrics collection from our applications. This allows us to precisely identify exactly what our apps are doing and identify any bottlenecks in the service-to-service -service call chain. We'll then choose which network we want to deploy the Azure Spring Apps into. This is very helpful because it allows us to deploy Azure Spring Apps into existing network topologies to meet governance requirements. We'll keep the defaults for this demo. If we want to, we can tag the newly created resource according to corporate tagging conventions. On the last page, we can review all the settings we've chosen, hit the Create button, then wait about 10 minutes for Azure to spin up a brand new instance of Azure Spring Apps that we can use to deploy applications into. In this demo, I'm going to show you the end-to-end -end developer workflow with Azure Spring Apps. Imagine that your boss asks you to build a Spring Boot-based REST API that uses Postgres to store its data. You're expected to deploy it to Azure and to follow all corporate governance and security standards. For example, uh, corporate security mandates that all secrets must be stored in a secure vault. How can you get started on this task without getting bogged down by corporate standards and processes? Well, you can use the Tanzu Application Accelerator capabilities that are available to you in Azure Spring Apps. An Application Accelerator is a code repo that captures a common pattern. For example, build a Spring Boot REST API that uses Postgres and Azure Key Vault. What distinguishes an Accelerator repo from other template repos that you can find on GitHub is that the Application Accelerators are created by the tech leads and architects in your company and are validated to meet your corporate standards. Once the code repos are registered with Azure Spring Apps, they can be browsed as a catalog from the Developer Tools page on the ASA console. We're going to start our journey down here in the section called Developer Tools. We click on the link for the Application Accelerator, and we'll be taken to the Application Accelerator UI, which displays a catalog of the available accelerators. The catalog in this demo is populated with a collection of samples to give you an idea of what Application Accelerators can be used for. Your company will populate it with company-specific app accelerators. Let's select the Spring Boot REST API Accelerator from the catalog. The Accelerator shows us a form that we can fill out and generate a project based on our answers. For example, we can set the project name, select the version of Java to use, and pick the name of the package for the generated code. The author of the Accelerator defines what questions to ask, and they also define how to generate code based on those answers. So you're always going to get a custom piece of code that's generated based on how you answered the questions. For this demo, we're going to select Codes API as the target project name. We're also going to stay with the default suggestion of Java 11. We'll select Codes API FA32 as the vault name to make sure that we have a unique name within Azure. Since we need a database, we'll check the Postgres Flexible Server option and enter a database name. We'll click on the Explore button to get a preview of the generated project. There's a nice README file with instructions on how to do local development as well as creating the required Azure resources such as Key Vault and Postgres. We'll be following the instructions in this README file for the rest of this demo. Next, we'll click Next to view our choices and download a zip file containing uh, the generated code. We can unzip the file, launch our IDE, and import the project. We now have a validated starter code that we can build on top of. Let's look around the project and see what code is in there. It looks like the generated code contains a standard Spring MVC and Spring Data JPA code, so we need a database on our laptop for development. Luckily, the author of the accelerator created a Docker Compose file that we can use to launch a local Postgres with a PG admin GUI. Now that the Postgres server is running locally, we can use the browser to navigate to the PG admin and we can look around to see what uh, databases and tables are in this uh, container that's running locally on our machine. It's now time to run the application. 
Let's run the application. Let's run the starter application and see what it does. Well, we can issue a command to send an HTTP request to localhost 8080. And look at that. We're getting back a random code that has you know, a motivational code with the ID of the code and the name of the author of the code. Now that we've seen the app running locally, it is time to deploy it to Azure Spring Apps. But first, we must create an Azure Key Vault and an Azure Flexible Postgres database. The code generated by the Accelerator contains an Azure Resource Manager templates to create the Key Vault and the database. The Vault and the database names were injected into the ARM templates parameter JSON file. So really, all we have to do is to just deploy the ARM templates to a resource group of our choice. The generated project's readme files got all the instructions that we need, so let's go ahead and do that. First, we'll run the ARM template to create the key vault. Then, we'll run the ARM template to create the Postgres database. Because we are creating a new database, we'll provide a password to access the database. The ARM template will store the password in the key vault we created in the previous step. Our app will need to read this password from vault to open a connection to the database. Now that the Key Vault and Postgres database are deployed, it's time to deploy the application to Azure Spring Apps using the Azure CLI. First, we'll run the command az spring app create, passing it the name of the application that we want to create, along with the configuration information, such as the amount of CPU and RAM. We'll also request a public URL using the dash dash assign endpoint true flag, which gives our application a URL that's accessible over the internet, allowing us to test it from a public endpoint. In a production deployment, you'll typically set the assigned endpoint to false so that requests arrive from your load balancers to the application over a private URL, which is typically a requirement for a secure deployments in a corporate environment. Now, the system assigned flag, which we see, which we passed in with dash dash system assigned true, configures the application to have an Azure assigned identity. This system identity can be granted permissions to access various Azure resources without the need for a password. This means that the application is able to use it to access the key vault so that it can read the password to access the database. Now this system identity can also be used to authenticate directly against the Postgres database without the need for a password, without the need to have to go to vault to read the password to access the database. However, we wanted to make this demo a little bit more complicated and show you some more concepts. Now that the application is created and has been assigned an Azure identity, we need to configure the key vault to allow access to the application so that the application can read the secret that's been put in there to access the database. Now, the az connection create command uh, takes care of all of the configuration. It goes and configures all of the access policies for key vault. So we don't have to kind of go into the key vault console or issue key vault commands to the configuration. Uh, it's actually a wonderful little feature that makes life really, really easy. Our next step is to compile the code using Maven. Once the app is compiled, we can deploy the Spring Boot jar file using the az spring app deploy command. We simply need to give this command two critical arguments, the name of the app which we are deploying, code to, and the path of the compiled jar file. Even though our application will run in a container on Kubernetes, we don't have to write a Docker file. This is amazing, because the Azure Spring Apps will use the Tanzu build service to automatically containerize our application code. So one of the key benefits of Azure Spring Apps is that it's simple to use without sacrificing power. You get all the benefits of running in containers and on Kubernetes without any of the complexity. Now that the application is running, we can check that it is working by visiting the Azure portal on the Spring Apps service page. We'll be able to see our app, click on it, and then we see the details of the app, including the public URL that, can, that has been automatically assigned by ASA. Visiting the URL, we can see the randomly generated code, similar to what we saw when we ran the application locally. Now, when the application was starting, the Azure Spring Cloud libraries took care of connecting to a key vault to get the password so that the app can grab the, the password of the uh, Postgres database and pull the codes from there. Once the app is deployed, operating it on Azure Spring Apps is quite easy. We can scale up the app. We can give it more memory or CPU, all with the click of a button or a CLI invocation. Uh, we can also scale out the application, give it give the app more app instances based on a fixed count, or we can use an auto scaler, which has numerous settings, such as auto scaling based on CPU usage or memory consumption, or the number of HTTP requests we're receiving. Of course, we also have support for zero downtime blueprint deployments uh, that's built into ASA. And there are a couple of new features though that have been added recently that I'd like to show you. Um, they're quite useful for debugging and troubleshooting. A couple of features that were added recently is the ability to launch a console directly into a running instance of an application. 
This gives you a command prompt that you can use for troubleshooting. This could be quite handy in situations where maybe you need to troubleshoot uh, network connectivity issues and you'd like to get in there and see if you can reach a particular remote host. Now, in brief, there is something for everyone. If you are a developer, you can build and scale workloads at cloud scale. You can easily apply cloud-friendly patterns such as externalized configuration, service registry and discovery, automating and monitoring end-to-end. You can get the full power of Kubernetes without even touching it. You can create any number of environments, automate testing, advance to production across the, across the globe. Uh, if you're in the IT team, you can operate the service and environments at scale. The service becomes the home for distributed workloads. You can connect with uh, services running on Azure, on-prem, or anywhere. Right? Now, as you operate, right, you do not have to worry about middleware management. You get unlimited scale. Uh, you can align your team's roles and responsibilities to match your team structure using Azure's role-based access control. You can apply policy management, monitor end-to-end. -end. Uh, you can also implement chargebacks in line with your funding model. Now, if you're an executive, you have the essential to uh, minimize total cost of ownership, high availability, and plenty of headroom to, to grow the grow the workload. You can harden harden your security using Azure Security, and they're all fully supported by Microsoft and VMware. Thank you.